Hey guys, Nerking101 here, and I know what you're probably thinking, this is different. I'm just looking at the titles, you're probably t- thinking, we're talking about Apple glasses, AR, what's going on, why is this different? Well, the reason for that is that nothing that we normally do on this channel is changing. I just wanted to do a video bringing it to people's attention. Then I do have a vlog channel where I upload the kind of content you'll be seeing in this video. And this is basically just an example. So if you enjoy this video, you can go check out my vlog channel, which will be linked in a card on screen and in the description box down below. It is called Aiden's Life. It has no real schedule, but it's basically for more serious, vloggy, less nerdy content. It's for anything else I want to create, really. For anything else that I don't think is suited for the main channel to go on. So if you're interested in any of that and you like what you see in this video, you can go check it out. I'm also doing this now because I'm starting a job at the moment and I'm going to need some content to put up and I've been wanting to promote the vlog channel. So this is what all that is. This is me promoting the vlog channel. And I thought long and hard about how I wanted to do this. And, and I, when I got my job, I wanted to go out and treat myself and get myself something to celebrate. So I went out and I got myself an Apple Watch. Because this is an actual job in an office, four days a week. So, and which I may tell you about the job one day. I may do another video if you guys are interested. It's really pretty cool what I'm doing. But no, but I wanted to treat myself. And I went out and I got myself an Apple Watch. And after a few days of having an Apple Watch, it kind of hit me. Because it doesn't really hit you when you just have an iPhone. How crazy advanced this is. This Apple Watch, how crazy advanced this is. But then you ask yourself, well, what's next? What comes after the Apple Watch? And after some thinking, I decided to start doing some research into what Apple was doing, and I discovered AR. Now, I knew about smart glasses, but it had never been something I typically looked into. My really most exposure to the concept of smart glasses was Iron Man glasses in the Marvel movies, in Infinity War, Endgame, and now the one Spider-Man has in Far From Home. That was my most exposure I've ever had to that. I mean, I had heard about the Snapchat spectacles and the Google Glasses, but those all failed. So I was just like, oh, it's just some gimmick that these companies have. And it very quickly becomes apparent to me that that's not what this is. Smart Glasses are an incredible piece of technology, and they feature AR. Now, what is AR? Now, I am not, this is not my field of expertise, but on a basic level, AR is just augmented reality. It allows you to overlay digital images on reality, which is awesome. And when I started hearing about the Apple Glasses, I started thinking not so much about how cool they would be, which it would be cool, but then I started thinking about if you actually made the technology work, first of all, who could make it work? I think Apple can do it. I think Apple is capable of doing it, I think they've been in integrating augmented reality into their phones for a long time. And I think the thing with Apple is that Apple, when they make things, they don't make it for corporations. That's the problem. A lot of the smart glasses are new for like engineering and construction and things of that nature to help maybe see what's going to happen or like see a digital imprint of the inside of an engine. Ho- holograms. They're kind of holograms. They're not, this is the thing, they're not holograms because they're not physical. They're just light being projected into your eye to overlay it on an actual surface that you're looking at. But holograms is the closest thing I can think of without looking anything up. But basically, the core concept was that it would help with things like that. But Apple doesn't do that. When Apple goes full on with something, they make it for the consumer. They make it like an Apple Watch. And the thing that we have discovered would be Apple Watch that you can have a piece of technology like this that is small and you can use Bluetooth to have the iPhone do most of the processing. Because obviously the problem with something like this is that there's no way to fit a computer in here that can process all the stuff and all the graphics and all the apps. It's just not possible. So the iPhone though had the computer chip powerful enough to do that. Oh shit. <sighs> Sorry about that. I would. Sorry about that, I started coughing. Yeah. So, yeah. But my immediate question to myself was, how could be eye, how could be eye glasses? 
I'm going to call them apple glasses, but they could be any number of things. They could be apple glasses, they could be eye glasses, they could be smart glasses. Well, I've got the term, it's like smart glasses, smart phone. Who knows, Apple has so many things they could call it. I'm thinking they're going to lean toward Apple glasses, I think that's a good brand name. Because eyeglasses is just brand-wise, it's kind of weird, I mean, it sounds like eyeglasses for the eye. Which, by the way, for anybody like me that was immediately curious, yes, Apple has purchased and has begun working with companies to do prescription lenses. So don't worry, this isn't going to be something if you have bad eyes that you can't use. But Apple is very clearly developing AR. There's an AR home kit on the iPhone. Pokemon Go is an AR app. But at the end of the day, the question I asked myself was why I thought that Apple AR could change the world. And then I thought about myself. I thought about me. And personally, I am directionally challenged. I have trouble reading maps. I have trouble getting around with the street signs. And one of the reasons I don't do as many travel vlogs in New York City as I would like, even though I live there, is because I'm normally putting in a lot of effort to get around. You know, I have a lot of trouble. I get super confused. at the combination of being directly challenged, of learning disabilities, and it's really hard. And yeah, you have apps on your phone and everything, but those sometimes don't update, sometimes the maps are unclear. But then, then you think about it with smart glasses. With smart glasses, you know what you could do? You could have arrows. You could have pictures that blend in seamlessly with what you're actually seeing. Hologram-like arrows that lead you around the city. So for people that are directionally challenged, it's incredible. Another awesome thing I thought you could do is, if you were able to connect it to uh, something like Google, or some sort of internet search engine, and if you could just improve theory a bit, because theory is a little dumb, but if you could make theory a little bit smarter, and it could relay questions to say Google, who's to say they couldn't develop a recognition technology for Ubers? You know, where Uber is a big story you typically hear, is people got in the wrong Uber. They got in the wrong Uber, they ended up being kidnapped, they ended up being killed or raped. It's, it's, it's a problem. And my immediate thought was, what if you could, like, do like a car recognition, so you could like, because some people don't know what like an Audi looks like, some people aren't experts on cars, so some people they could look on their phone, or even on their glasses, and maybe your Uber will pop up there, but you could see what kind of car the Uber is, and then you could like tap a side and be like, hey Siri, and you would have Siri like, <laughs> Siri, Siri turned on. No, but you could have theory, and you could be like, hey, theory, what kind of car am I looking at? And they could tell you, and they could make sure of the right car. Uber could even invent, like, a feature for the app that does it. It doesn't even need to be something Apple does. But my point is, imagine they were connected to Google, and you could look at anything. Imagine if I could look at this microphone, and I could be like, what type of mic is this? Imagine you could look at a piece of metal, and be like, what kind of metal am I looking at? What is it made of? Imagine the possibility. Imagine from a convenience for people that have memory problems, and you could do it so everybody's in your phone, you could give them each a picture, and then you could give them a contact name, obviously, right? But imagine if the glasses then have facial recognition, and you could look at people's faces and be like, Oh, so that's who that is. It popped up, but nobody else could see it. There are so many amazing things you could do with smart glasses. Another thing that immediately came to my mind was the ability to view news while walking around in the moment. You could view news, or you could view information. Let's say your car breaks down, and you need to view what an engine looks like. You could get a free, a 350 model of an engine, and you could use, say, your phone or your Apple Watch to rotate it and play with it, a lot like the technology Iron Man has in the movies, but you just wouldn't be interacting with the hologram. You've been using the Apple Watch, or the phone to control the hologram or the image you were seeing in your eye. So then you could control it, you could rotate it, you could get a perfect view of this thing. And just, there are so many things you could do. There's an IKEA app on the iPhone now, an AR IKEA app that allows you to see furniture around the house. Imagine if instead of FaceTime, what you could do is you could have like body scanners or something. You could do something so instead of FaceTime, it like projects the face. 
So when you're on Facebook, you could be in your living room. I could be right here, and I could click, and I could say like, "Hey Siri, call mom," and then it would project my mother's face. My stepbrother had a home pod in his bedroom, which is the room right next door to this. I apologize. That caught me off guard. I always forget it's there, but it's not Kiriton, so I always forget that's there. But basically, I was sitting there and I was thinking, like, imagine all the capabilities. Imagine for people that, like, imagine for older people, the ability to put on a pair of glasses, especially when they start forgetting things, and they can have it read to them who these people are. There are so many capabilities of these glasses. And then I started thinking even bigger. Imagine smart glasses on a battlefield. Imagine if you're a police officer. Everybody just puts on their smart glasses. For people that don't need glasses, they would just be like sunglasses, but clear. They would be like these that I'm wearing right now, but they wouldn't be for Christian. And for people who went for Christian, they would be. But imagine if you could just hit a button and they start recording something. Now, of course, that's terrifying. That is not something a consumer should have. They should maybe be able to take pictures and record things. I think Apple would need to be really careful. But then again, people say we're not ready to have people walking around with cameras on their face. But then again, I say, and you had told somebody 20 years ago, that there was a time when everybody would have a camera at their fingertips that they could have out and taking pictures or video that could go on for hours within, and they could have it out within a couple seconds. And they could do this. Okay, I'm recording video. If they could do that, if you would told somebody that 20 years ago, they would have said that was terrifying. It's about adjustment. It's about change. And part of me thinks the potential there, for at least for police, whether or not the general consumer had that would be up to Apple, but the technology for that exists. Like Snapchat spectacles, whatever they're called, they did it. So the technology is there. Apple could do it. So the technology is given that a police officer can, can make such a difference because then everything they do, they could record. So then if they're like, if you're a white police officer arresting an African American, you have to record it. You, there's, there are so many things you could do that you know, would help police officers build cases. It could help them save evidence. I mean, a police officer can't be taking out a gun, they can't be taking out a phone in the middle of the gunfight. But what they could do is quickly tap their thing and go, Steer record. And then all their stuff would be recorded that could be used as evidence in court. There are still, or imagine if you're in the military or you're a spy. I mean, the practical application for police and military for something like smart glasses are massive, but there are privacy concerns. Obviously, Apple would need to address that, and Apple has always been big on privacy, so I don't see why they wouldn't address that. But the more I think about it, the ability to see somebody fake while you're walking around and talking to them, the ability to see your text messages without taking out your phone or looking at your watch, it just is so amazing to me. And the application for that in day-to-day -day life, for the facial recognition, for reminders. Imagine if you're walking down the street and you have a reminder flash or something. I mean, just the application for that are amazing. Imagine you could look at trains if you're in the city. If you don't live in the city, imagine you just look at a train and it could tell you where the train went. Like, you could just look at, like, the lightning play on a car, and it could tell you if it's an Uber or not. The practical applications for something like that are endless, and then there'd be entertainment. Imagine the games. Like, imagine the ability to make that boring walk to work way more fun and not have to waste your phone battery. Now, a lot of people do bring up that the problem with something like this is the battery. But as I pointed out earlier, it's an easy fix. Because the problem is, is that if you put a battery, if you put a computer chip on something like the Apple Watch and make it process, all that data is not going to end well. It's not. Because the computer can't handle it. The computer can't. So what you do, and if it can, it kills the battery almost instantly. So what you do is you hook it up to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, and people have to pay a fee, probably a cellular fee, a cellular fee, a cell fee, whatever, a cell payment. You have to pay your cell phone company. Like you do with the Apple Watch, and what you do is you hook it up to Bluetooth, cell, cellular, or whatever you want to do, and then uh, the Apple Watch, or the phone, probably the phone at the moment, I can see maybe in like 20, 30 years the Apple Watch being capable of...
I don't have a case for right now if you get in the video, but I can think in like 20 or 30 years the Apple Watch being capable of doing it, but not now. But because the iPhone has a power processor on pretty close to a par with a lot of old older computers. Sorry, I felt like shaking, it was being weird. No, but basically, the iPhone had a power processor and computer processor on other ones some old computers, and even some modern ones. So it could handle the glasses. So then all the glasses would really need to be able to do, much like the Apple Watch, to transfer everything to this. And it could do all the data, and everything. it could do everything through the iPhone. So then the battery wouldn't die quickly. And Apple has proven that you can use one of their devices through an iPhone, it can work. The Apple Watch, does last all day. I can testament to this. It's only died one time. I got this about a month ago. It's only died once since I got it. One time. It died one time since I got this watch. It died one time. And that was because I was up really late and I had taken it off and I just put it down on my desk next to me and I hadn't plugged it in. So it actually had been active for over eight hours. So yeah, it died, but it only died once. And that's pretty impressive, like, I, I went on a trip, a work trip. Well, it wasn't really a work trip, as you know, I haven't started work. But I was doing a trip with my workplace, because the trip had to, the trip had to happen, it was with, it was some of medical stuff, and it was a medical trip, and it had to happen before I could start work, so it was like one thing I did before I started. So I went on this work trip, earlier in June, around the 16th, I can't talk about much, but we, but we went on this work trip, and this thing lasted, I got up it. Seven in, like six in the morning, I had a seven thirty train to Washington D.C. I got back at nine o'clock at night. I think when I got back, I still had twenty percent left, and I was basically using it on and off all day. What an amazing device, and what amazing that it had the battery capacity for something like that. So my whole thing is that you connect it via the iPhone. I think that it could do that. And it, it's all the practical applications that I thought that are really cool, but then there are also just all the cool applications, like all the cool things. I think it would be really cool if you could look at an object and it could tell you what it is. Uh, we have a picture there, I'll show you. It's a picture of Brooklyn. But imagine, you're not from the U.S., you don't know that's a picture of Brooklyn. Imagine if you could just run that through a processor. Imagine if you could just run that thing through a processor, and you could look at it, and you could go, Hey Siri, tell me what that is. And Siri would tell you what that is. Imagine that. How incredible would that be on a technological level? Imagine being able to get any of your questions answered based on looking at something. Imagine being, one of the biggest problems people have with the internet is that you can't get, you can get the answers to most things on the internet, but you don't know what's not an object it called. And you're kind of just stuck trying to figure out what something is called so you can look up information about it. That's the problem with looking up things online and in a book. If you don't know what you're looking at is called, you can't learn anything. So imagine you could just look at it and you could get all the information about it. Imagine how, off, imagine how revolutionary that would be for learning. Imagine the educational value of something like that. Imagine the, educa the educational value of having kids be able to look at things and then get the information. There's educational value in AR. AR is the future. AR allows you to look at a something and get like the components of a computer. Imagine if you're building a computer and you wanted to look at the specs and then you wanted to look at all the parts of it. Instead of having to look at them all online and look at flat images, 3D augmented reality images on your table in front of you. Imagine, as I talked about earlier, an IKEA or store app. So when you're decorating a house, imagine you could select different things on your computer. So you go on your computer, and you can scan your room with your glasses. Then you can upload the image to your computer. You can go on the room, and you can pick where the furniture would go, but you're still on the computer. So that your room is scanned. Now it's on the computer. There's a picture in your room, it's scanned, it's on the computer. Now you can pick out where all the furniture would go, and you can create an augmented reality setup. Then you put your glasses on, you go out into the empty room, and you hit a button, and then it materializes all the furniture in those spots. Augmented reality, it's, the, the bank, it, it's basically there. When IKEA is already doing it, allowing you to do it with the iPhone and doing it with pieces of furniture. But imagine if you worked in hand with like computers, and then people could be like, oh, so that, and then they could just view immediately what their house would look like with those items, with that setup. You know, 
convenient. The amount of things you could do for people with something like that is unreal. The practical applications of this technology is massive. I think everybody else who could do it has tried, but you gotta remember, Apple typically isn't the first one in a game. The iPhone is not the first smartphone. There were other phones that tried to do what the iPhone did before the iPhone. The Apple Watch was one of the first, but it wasn't the first piece of wearable technology to go on the internet. Like, the and smart glasses are going to be the same thing. Apple, the MacBook was certainly not the first ever computer. There were computers before it. So, the question at the end of the day is, does Apple always do things first? No! But then they come out with something like the Apple Watch, which everybody else is like... Which is probably, in my opinion, the best. Like, they had the best phone. They ended up coming out with these pieces of technology. Like, it was Apple who was like, touchscreen. That was Apple. You remember? Before, before the iPhone, smartphones still had buttons. Then Apple looked at their iPhones and they went, well, I'll put a touchscreen on. And then, you know, iPhones are super successful. And I think that's the future. I think, I think Apple has been waiting. I think they've been looking at what worked and what didn't from other companies. And I think they're purchasing companies and I think they're putting all they've got into AR, which if you read up on it, they are. They're purchasing a ton of companies. They're patenting a lot of stuff. Like, but that's that Apple is working on AR smart glasses is not up for debate because they have a patent for smart glasses. I think they have a, a patent for glasses that have these kind of functions. They have a patent for it. So it's not up for debate that these things are in development at the very least. Considering they're buying companies, they're talking about it. Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, have been going on for a really long time about AR. And he has even stated that he thinks that AR is a more foreseeable future for practicality and for everyday users like you and me. VR is probably always going to be more educational. It's going to be more about... VR is going to be more like, let's, let's use it for school and video games. And, it, and, and, and the entertainment. Movies, video games, school, books, things of that nature. Like, AR is going to be like, Hey, I want, remember when you were all kids and you dreamed of going to Hogwarts? Put on AR and go to Hogwarts. You're the place you can go in, in, in England, you put on the AR and transport the castle into Hogwarts and everybody else goes there and you all interact and you're all Hogwarts students. Like, you know, that, that's, what, hey, that's what VR is going to be. That's what VR is going to be. It's going to be entertainment and it's going to be historical. It's going to go be like, go back and watch this virtual reality recreation of the Second World War. It's going to be things like that. Like, It's going to be things like... You like, you know, there are going to be people that want to do research out Hiroshima. So they will create a VR recreation of the event and they will go back and place themselves there. Like, that's going to happen. I'm sure in decades people will do it with Hiroshima, 9 11. I mean, like, it's going to happen. People are going to want, if younger people don't know, they weren't alive, and, they're going to, and Nick will help teach them about how bad these events were. But that's what VR is going to be educational, entertainment. And really neat stuff like that. And I'm sure I would get one. Like if, I'm, I'm waiting with VR. That's the thing. I'm not getting VR yet. Because I don't think it's way... It's not at the point yet where I'm interested. But I think it's getting there. And I think maybe in like 10 or 20 years, I'll probably be buying a VR headset. But AR smart glasses, I think for me, will help me greatly. Imagine imagine for me being able to get around more easily, have the, have AR telling me where to go, being able to view your text messages, control your volume, see people facing while you're on a phone call with them, see their mouth, see their facial impressions and all that. Watch the news. Imagine you're in a car, something horrible happens. There's a terrorist attack, there's a tragedy. You need to view the news and you need to see images. If not, a something small like a sporting event, there's something you need to see. Something has happened, they're, they're breaking news, there's been an attack or something, and you need information. Maybe if you're in the same city or whatever, you can go play news, and then you can put your air, and then you can have the image pop up, and then if you want to listen to it, AirPod. I, mean, I don't think the Apple Classic would have a speaker. But you could put in your AirPods, and you could have the news on one hand, and you could be telling people in the car what's going on. Like the potential for smart glasses to me is staggering. It's so exciting. I'm so excited to see 
what Apple Classic can do. I'm starting to work this year, so I'm actually going to be saving up. Because there's a rumor that they're going to go live in, you know, in uh, 2020, they're going to launch. And honestly, I'm not going to be buying them when they come out. Because the thing, Smart Classic could either be like three, like five, six hundred dollars. Because I'd probably have to pay more. Let's say they, let's say they start off at a bait price of five hundred. I'd have to get it for eight because I would need prescription I would need prescription glasses. But just to take a moment to think about it, all right? But I'm saving up. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna put away like five. I'm not considering it. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna save. I think I'm gonna put away like five or six dollars every month. And when Apple got to come out, I want to get them. I'm super interested in this technology, and I really wanted to do this video rambling about this thing that it actually, I guess, really nerdy. It really is me rambling. Is it about sci-fi technology that is basically becoming real? But I really I wanted to say that doesn't really fit in on the channel. But I wanted to give you guys an idea of the kind of more vlog, no script, not a ton of editing. And there's going to be some editing in this because I coughed a few times and I had to go get the water bottle and things of that nature. But overall, there's not much editing in this. It's just really just me having a fun time, rambling about something. Hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me your thoughts on all this in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed it, definitely go check out my vlog channel. I had a lot of fun doing this. I'm not going to be able to do a ton of stuff like this. Yeah, like that, I am working. So I'm not going to have enough time to produce content that is obviously always going to slow down production. But I am super excited to get videos to you guys. I'm super excited to keep making videos. I just wanted to do a video that was different. And so if you enjoyed it, as I said, vlog channel in the card above and in the comment section down below. It is Aiden, A-I-D-A-N, apostrophe, S, life. That's what it is. It's a lot of fun. It's just vloggy stuff I haven't uploaded in a while. I may put this up on there later. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not sure if I'm going to put this up on both channels. That's what I'm thinking of doing. But, yeah, at the end of the day, super fun to do. Check out the vlog channel. Comment your thoughts on AR and the future of technology. Do you think gene editing could do the things like that? Do you think you could become a male-female hybrid with purple skin and pure white monster eyes with gene editing, theoretically? Do you think it is the next major breakthrough? Or do you think it's more likely we're going to get smart glasses first? It's, are you interested in getting smart glasses? How do you feel about the fact that this technology that it's like... This is technology that they gave Tony Stark in an Iron Man movie. They're meant to be like, how cool is that? Like, that's a cool little gadget Tony Stark has. And now we may have it in like two years. And that movie they gave it to Tony Stark came out like a year ago. Like, I think that was the first time they ever had the smart glasses. They wasn't thin anymore. So in 2018, he got the smart glasses. And now in 2020, where we may be getting it smart glasses. Then they'll be able to do a lot of that stuff, which is mind blowing. How do you feel about all this and all the things I talked about? Let me know in the comments. Did you enjoy this? Did you not? And if you did, once again, subscribe to the channel. Also, tell me if you're going to subscribe to the vlog channel. Let me know. And above all, guys, have a great day. I have my first day of work tomorrow. And yes, I recorded this the night before, so I am 7 o'clock at night. I need to go eat dinner. But above all, guys, have a great day. This is Nurking 101, signing out.